and welcome to the Unlucky Frog Gaming Podcast. I'm your host, Ben Porter, and I'm joined by my guest co-host for this week, Scott Milne. Hello. How are we doing, Scott? Uh, we're very good. Yeah. Today. You you've been on the podcast before. I have as part of the quartet discussing Malign Portents. Malign Portents, yes. It, earlier on in the year. Yep. Um it was exciting times. St- still exciting times, still still stuff to talk about. So what are we going to talk about this week, Scott? Well, as as you always do, let's start with what we've been up to this yeah, week. Start with what we've been up to, and later on in the episode, we're going to talk a little bit about online community. Yes. Just in general terms, what makes a good community, what makes a bad one. It's a huge component of the, the hobby now, um, the, the whole online presence. I think, I don't think you can escape it. Oh no, not at all. Especially if you want to be involved in remote areas. Yeah. Um, coming from Scotland, something that we can talk actively about. Absolutely. So we'll talk about that a little bit later. But as you say, what what, what have you been up to, Scott? So this week uh, has is my it's been my role playing week. So yep. I'm part of the role playing uh, group with Josh. Yeah. Uh, and uh, this week we fought uh, an orc army. Strange enough for a, a level a level six Pathfinder character. It's like five guys taking it's, on an orc it was, army. It was five well, five guys, a bunch of farmers with pitchforks and uh, a group of other heroes. Okay, um, so it was a little bit of a seven samurai thing l- going on. A little bit of a seven okay. samurai thing going on. Yeah. Um we, we won. Yeah. Minorly. Okay. Um but it was it was a it was a victory hard fought. I th- I think what all the listeners want to know. Is Josh still playing a halfling riding a Rottweiler? No. So Biff has been graciously retired okay. uh, to allow for uh, Josh's wolf Blizzard, right. who was totally not renamed by the group because the original name was Naf. Josh. Um, Sorry, I- Naf? <laughs> no, no. His original name was Snow. He called, there was he, a he called the ferocious white wolf snow was he was he being was he being ironic i don't know no he he tried to make up on the spot at which point we all went really yeah you're not going to call this this really ferocious creature something <laughs> like something ferocious a blizzard yeah. a deadly yeah. snowstorm no no yeah. he 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 originally went for snow and then very graciously changed it. Yeah, <laughs> that was retconned. That that was su- that was super retconned. Yeah, actually, that was why uh, the, the um, it was while he was talking. We were talking to the wolf through a druid that okay. the, the wolf decided to. My name's Snow. Well, <laughs> they they asked him what his name was, and the wolf had no concept of it. So okay. that's why we had to name. Oh, okay, which stands to reason. It does stand to reason. Yes. Yeah. Um, so yes, no, he's given up. He's given up. Beth the dog. He now rides uh, Blizzard the wolf, uh, and it is it's it's still a very good addition, range okay. addition to the party. He's still alive. Uh, very close to death. See, my uh, money, on, my money was on him being dead. He had a he had an orc pinning him to the ground at one point. Okay, and were it not for the druid's lightning ball, he may very well have just been a, a halfling corpse in the battlefield. Well, that, um, that's a shame. No, no, thanks to me, who was the healer stuck in combat. Um, and so, so, what 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 character are you playing? Uh, I very, you'll be very proud to know, Ben. I am a dwarf. Yeah, um, not, not like you, Scott. No, no, not like me at all. No, no. The the in case frame, in case it wasn't clear from that, uh, Scott is a fellow dwarf enthusiast. Stout of frame, likes my beer, yeah. and has a big beard. So yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm I'm not so much stout of frame, but you know I've got the the whole sort of grumpy, grumpy exterior, bearded, well. dour um, thing going on. So so play play dwarf cleric. I'm all about the the heels and the the strangely enough very easily tied into community element yep. of it as well. Um, but he he was standing in front of the nice squishy wizard trying to protect him when Josh's character ran off to the flank and a horde of orcs to say I say a horde. Two two orcs decides yeah. to chase him down and knock lumps out of him. That I couldn't reach him because that's what happens when you go off on your own. Don't split the party. Yeah, they say after having an adventure where they split the party. It does happen. It, they it say does. don't split the party, but no. the party always splits we, we up. Did, at some we, point. we did. We did. We did get some NPCs to follow us around, though. Okay. Um, 
who were played by the the characters who the the players whose characters weren't there at that stage and that was a really good way of involving everyone uh-huh. even though the party was doing two separate things um we had all of the npcs survive up until we sent three of them back to camp and they were ambushed which was meant for us oh they're so, expendable oh, that that's the wrong attitude to take <laughs> that is the wrong attitude to take yeah every character is uh Every character is valuable, and if you go in with the thinking, D- depending on your character's alignment, d- d- depending on your character's alignment, yeah, but yeah well, they, they're they're still valuable. To, That's true. To, uh, still, they the have their way. uses. Yeah, <laughs> but no, the um, the yeah, the going in with the, the thought of a character, especially if you know it's not a main protagonist, going in with the fact that this guy is disposable. Yeah, very bad attitude to have in our, our GM. Um, again, you guys have met him before, Mr. Thomas Mannering. Uh, he 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 frowns greatly upon uh, he frowns greatly upon people being treated as sheets of paper in front of you. Um, and it's a good attitude to have in not only in role playing but in life in general. It's true because it, it would be quite unrealistic to just treat them as a commodity unless yeah. you are an evil dark lord. Exactly, which most people are not nope. when they play. Um, D and D and Pathfinder and things oh, like that. You're meant to be the glorious hero saving the world. Incidentally, what's your character's alignment? Uh, my character is lawful good. Okay, I, I was picking that up from the way you were talking about that. Yeah, yeah, he the... he may have slipped a little bit recently, but that's fine because um, th- th- this we we've discussed this before in the podcast. Yeah. I think that the the moral the moral compass, the you know the lawful evil, chaotic mm-hmm. good, all of that. That's really a starting point for your character. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, the, the reason I say he slipped a little bit, he decided to take a pot shot at a random falcon somewhere. Uh, well, not him. He got the half. He got Josh's character to take a random pot shot at a falcon, unbeknownst to him, because I, I as the player, hadn't done my research properly, um, and was a bit quick off the the draw. Uh, shot down my god's favoured animal. And ended up with a shooting pain through my chest and a scar to tell me not to do that again and to think a little bit more before I tell the halfling to shoot something. That'll do it. It does. It really yeah. does. No, it, it it got me. It got me thinking again, and I I got a little a sm- reprimand. Small heart attack and a scar. Uh, yeah, yeah, basically. So I think he got off lightly. He, he changed. Yeah, yeah. He, changed, he he quickly reverted back to the the better ways. Yeah, yeah. N- needless to say. So, uh, so that's my that's my been my week. What have you been up to, Ben? I have been playing a lot of the Arkham Horror card game. Uh, I've really been getting into it, really enjoying it. And it's funny you just talking about um, role playing games because mm-hmm. I think like when I was describing it to you, although it is a card game, it it, it feels and plays a lot like a role playing game. Um, it, even down to the fact that it is designed with campaign play okay. in mind. So like you record uh, trauma that your investigator suffers and all this sort of right. thing. So it's very immersive, very story driven and that combined with the signature punishing difficulty of the Mythos games. I, I love it. I'll give my full disclosure. I've played Arkham Horror once I've played so. F- <laughs> the, this this particular game of Arkham Horror has been mentioned on the podcast before numerous times. S- Scott is getting married to the poor lady. <laughs> who, I, I who, don't know. I don't know what else I did yeah. um, to to keep her at my side after that traumatic experience. Yeah, well, we definitely didn't help. No, so it's not thanks no. to us. Oh, you did. You did. You you. You introduced her to your lady halves. That's after true. That stage. Yeah. Um, which, that, that's which about all we did. Really but, yeah. That's about all we did. <laughs> no. So yeah. So that that was my that, that was that was the first game of Arca Horror. I played a game of Eldritch Horror recently. Mm-hmm. Yeah. The the kind of mid, it's like scaled mid up a level little bit. Game isn't it? Because so it's more. Well, it's it's Arkham Horror, but shrunk down actually. It's oh, is not, it? It's okay, not it's quite as right. yeah. It's it's not quite as expansive, although it's it's still quite yeah. Um, and the the difficulty levels in those yeah are tricky. So that's my kind of actually my Cthulhu mythos really. Um, that's the extent of your that's my experience. extent of my experience with it. But the way Ben's described this to me, and as he's just done to you guys, 
it, it really puts me in the mood to play it. And I'm yeah. for full disclosure again, I'm not the biggest card game fan. Yeah. Um, although having seen, he did have it. I can attest he's been playing a lot of it. He did have it set out when yeah. I came in all today, over the table, all over the table that we quickly put away and played. Oh, we played a game of Shadespire. We did as well. Um, so this was your first time. First time playing Shadespire. Yeah. What were your yeah. thoughts on it? Uh, great little fast-paced game. Um, very different to uh, the ethos of a lot of the other Games Workshop games. Yeah. Um, I tend to play them like you do, Ben, uh, as narrative. Um, so there's a lot more story-driven scenario games. Yeah. Uh, but it was fantastic just to pick it up. And I'm hoping I have the gist of it down even just after one game. Now, I'm looking forward to going back home, digging out all of the cards that I may just have recently bought for it and picking my warband. That that is part of the fun of of uh, a game like Shadespire. And that, you know, going back, we just mentioned Arkham Horror. That's yeah. part of the fun of Arkham Horror as well, is that you get to essentially customize mm-hmm. your loadout. And it it's a shame that a lot of role playing games certainly on the tabletop don't quite have the degree of customization in them that say a, a role playing game on a video game would but you're starting to see the this customization in the form of a deck creeping into a lot of games where you've got you've got your character you've got your abilities mm-hmm. and then you've got this deck that can have all sorts of things in it yeah yeah there is yeah um the, the my main experience with role playing is is Pathfinder, and mm-hmm. although that has a high level of customization, yeah, um, you're right. Everything does become a bit fixed while you're actually playing it. Yeah, there's not a lot of change you can make during it. But there are, I've seen some physical elements, mm-hmm. not necessarily decks specifically, yeah, but um, a lot of the items and things that can have a bonus mm-hmm. in game if you have these physical effects and they are random depending on yeah on what the item does. So it's because one of the games that we spoke about on the podcast recently, uh, we spoke to Daryl Jones, who's making a game called uh, Dobber's Quest for the Key. Yeah, love that yeah. one. Yeah, we, yeah. <laughs> Everyone in Scotland laughs when you say it, but at the same time, he he's done a similar thing where he, although his is quite a different thing in that it is competitive, mm-hmm. he has a deck building role playing game. Yep. But you get to Mario Kart style trip your pals up along the way. Ah, uh, okay. So it it's it's an interesting idea that not many people are exploring at the moment, but you're starting to see people explore it in different ways. Absolutely. Um and that that's something that Shadespire does. Yeah. Although it's instead of it being tied to one character, you've got a full warband. Mm-hmm. And as we've said before, you can have two people rock up to an event with the same warband and they play completely differently well I've seen um, a similar thing going back to the Malign Portents which we discussed the last time I've seen a similar thing happen with um, those being added into Age of Sigmar yeah. um, where although you had your set army you've now got these extra things that this deck of, of portents that you mm-hmm. can although not greatly affecting your army they may help every now and again with strategy. And I actually I see the the, the great similarity between that and and Shadespire because you are relying on your characters and their ability to to defend or do damage, yeah. backed up by the fact that you have this hand of extra help. It's like, every um, now we're going to slightly tip the odds in our favour yeah. here, and yeah. but that that's a great comparison. Um, and I dare say that that's perhaps um, a design philosophy. That Absolutely. Games Workshop are starting to integrate into a lot of their games, and that I I I don't think we play enough of the Malign Portent stuff. I think they're phenomenal, and I would yeah. actually like to see perhaps something like that integrated into the full rule set, where you have, I I guess um like forty k has the command points. They element. do, yeah, and I, I think that was a lot that was taken from. The, the more important was probably taken from that a lot mm-hmm. as well, but having having something like that in the full game or almost continuously in play, yeah, great addition to it. And as you're saying, it's on on their own. These things aren't super powerful. No, but no, when, they, they should never be. They should never. They should never be game winning. And I yeah. think that's where a lot of the, the previous editions and other games 
fall a little bit. Yeah. It's when they add in something, they do it not not just as an add on, but as a game changer. Mm-hmm. Um, and and that that's where it that as I've mentioned, that's where it falls flat on its face. It it it, it creates an imbalance rather than just tweaking. Things. It's a complaint. I know neither of us play it, but mm. it's a complaint I've heard a lot of people voice with regards to Magic the Gathering recently. Is that they they've added in these like wacky mechanics and like they've mm. added new currencies to the game, and there's been a lot of complaint that these drastic changes have imbalanced the game on a competitive level. Mm-hmm. It might make it more fun if you're just like drafting or whatever, yeah. but it it makes composition and things a bit difficult for tournaments and way back in the day uh, when Games Workshop did the Storm of Magic expansion ah, yes. it was a similar thing where it was these big cataclysmic spells that could wreck an entire army in one yep. go whereas Malign Portents takes this idea of here's a little extra thing to do with that army you've got there but it's subtle or it may be just that you do a couple of extra mortal wounds, which yeah. may be the difference between killing a hero and not killing a hero mm-hmm. that turn, or it, it buffs a unit ever so slightly, um, which you're right, it's not, it's not game change, it's not as if the, the create silly black sun. Yeah, just you're not, you're not going to have any going, oh that's bullshit that you did that one mortal wound to me to kill my general. Because who, who you can't? No, it's 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 an extra wound. Yeah. No, no one's no one's really going to, and they've got the ability to do it back yeah. as well. Versus like versus like you say the spells like um, purple sun where it's like oh yeah this is going to pass over half your army they all need to take a strength test and so nothing you can do to stop it yeah. and that's it yeah yeah so it's I I we we've said it before in the podcast I'll say it again I, I feel very positive about um, the. The very apparent change in direction that Games Workshop has taken yep. over these past couple of years, and I'm really looking forward to seeing what they come out with at Expo. Because I dare say, of course, there's going to be some big reveals there. They're one of the main sponsors. Exactly. It's one of the biggest uh, events of its type in the world. Yeah, I, I'm going to sound like a complete and utter noob. I'm yeah. not saying this. When is Expo again? UK Games Expo is, I think, at the very beginning of June. Uh, which perfectly lines up for usually GW does a big summer release, yep. um, coinciding with the schools disappearing yep. out. Um, so I could, you could see some pretty big reveals coming in that one. Yeah, actually. and uh, they, they'll be getting ready to release General's Handbook 2018 as they well around do. that time, because that usually comes in the summer. So if there's any nice GW employees out there listening, give us something nice, please. Yes. <laughs> come, come and talk to us even. <laughs> we'll, we'll be your friend. Ben's nice, he gives you cookies. Yeah. So, one of the other things we wanted to talk about Mm -hmm. that um, I just heard about today, which, in the time of recording, it's the the 9th of May, there's been a bit of a to-do about the 1920-plus artist, or, as people maybe better know him, the scythe artist. Jakob Rosalski, Mm -hmm. I believe that's how his name's pronounced. He is Polish. It it, it could be. I'm not going to even... I, I, I'm going to just agree with you. I used my to, pronunciation is terrible. Yeah, I used to work with a guy um, called Kuba, which was short for Jakob. So I'm guessing that's how. Yeah, that's yeah. the the pronunciation. Of I, that I name can of. I can see how we as 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 British people have taken that and changed it to Jacob. Yeah, yeah. So so Jakob Rosalski is the the artist who did all of the artwork for Scythe. Which is, which or has been one of the biggest releases of the past year. A huge mm-hmm. game, um, a little bit divisive, I think, but generally speaking, quite popular. Big, massive, sprawling map control, resource management type game. It's right down my alley. Yep. Being a, Being a, a Carcassonne nut for me. Yeah. With that whole placement of a placement of a map and yeah. placement of resources uh, and, and being descended from farmers and oh of course well yeah. the, the, uh, any anything agriculture yeah. related is uh, is should be part of my blood that and railways yeah. so I've got I've got most of the the really weird nerdy things covered so there's probably a Scott in the parallel universe that 1920 plus exists in, and he's having a whale of a time. 
Oh, most likely. Yeah, yeah. If if he's if if he's if he has grown up anything like me, he's probably a farming magnate somewhere. Yeah. Um, where something like that with his farming mix. Yeah. Just going to town. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Right in there. So, back to the matter at hand. Mm-hmm. Um, there's been a bit of a to do because a, a Reddit detective. I think I, I, that doesn't sound too derogatory, does it? Having not been a, a major frequenter of Reddit. Uh, I mean, I, I think the government really needs to employ some of these Reddit people as investigators because some of the stuff that they dredge up is just. Th- this is this is where I start the whole conspiracy conspiracy theory of who knows that they're out, they aren't already out there. This is yeah. the way they disseminate the information. Yeah, that's it. We so, are no way endorsed by the UK government in the slightest. No. Just putting that out there. Yeah. Seriously, it, we're yeah. not. <laughs> The, this this Reddit detective has has dredged up a whole load of Rosalski's artwork, mm-hmm. and has compared it with a number of photographs. And there there's some strong similarities with the examples that he's sourced. There are, yep. Having seen it, Ben was showing me the, the images and the, the Reddit thread, as well. There are. Um, however, a lot of the the examples that are showing are there are very commonplace items. Um, yeah, like the, there's a picture of a cat. Um, a herd, herd of animals. I think they're they're pigs. Or sheep. Yeah, a, a giant mech. You know your standard agricultural items. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Is there a giant mech on there? Yeah, yeah there's one. There's one. Oh, there, there is. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Sorry, there's a giant mech. Yeah. Although it's again. Um, so but but you're right. I mean, like there's guys watching sheep and stuff like that. Yeah. So yeah, pretty uh, common yeah. commonplace things. What this guy has said is that Rosalski has traced these images. There's a subtle turn of phrase there that drastically alters what he's actually done. What what Rosalski's done is quite common for artists to do, mm-hmm. where they, they take an image or a photograph, they Frankenstein it, and then what they do is they they layer yep. their, their brush strokes or whatever you want to call them over the top of that. To say it's tracing it, I think, is a bit of an exaggeration. Tracing as tracing as such has been an art form for for years. You go back to the the earliest um, more more in in cartoons and things. The earliest cartoons you look at a D- Disney. Disney's a great one for this. Motion capture for them used to be just getting a film of someone doing the action they want, and then literally tracing their outline and adding all the concepts over it. The, the Lord and, of the Rings animated film's full of it. Yeah, I mean, um, again, I'm going back to Disney example, but um, there's a fantastic, um, it's either a video or an article online, um, where it shows uh, Snow White. So it shows Snow White, the original yes, um, concept I've drawings. Yes, I've seen this. Yeah. Snow White's uh, imagery, and then to save on costs, and animation costs, all they've done is trace over it and used it in Robin Hood. It's the exact same dance sequence. Yep. All it is is slightly different artwork. Mm-hmm. So something like this has been going on in in mainstream media for for years. So it's fairly and common. It. And the the thing is as well is all this is being done through, as we mentioned earlier, just very commonplace items. Um, the mechs maybe not so much. <laughs> um, but even then, mechs are composed of of elements. You have a some form of movement mechanism, be it tracks or or legs. You have some sort of of command center, be it a, a cockpit or a, a full platform, and then you have the odd gubbins sticking out. And it's ma- it's maybe worth saying that the mechs in the nineteen twenty plus universe do look as though they could actually exist. Yeah, they 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 they're not far off. The aesthetic that a lot of our tanks and battleships and things have. Uh, they've got a very grungy, industrial look to them. Exactly. So, uh, as you say, you may well have borrowed elements of like, real-life machinery mm-hmm. to use that. Um, I dare say he has. But, so that that's not necessarily incriminating. A lot of artists do that. Yeah. Artists have done that for centuries. I mean, exactly. there's, a, there's a lot of evidence to, the, to state that, um, that Renaissance artists did much the same thing. Mm-hmm. Uh, a lot of the time even they would take uh, a face or something that another artist had done and rework it into yep. another image it, and not just anyone can do that so no, no and th- this is where it comes back to that that phrase of, of tracing he's saying it as if you know a monkey could do this yeah 
Um, I, I've tried to trace things. Yeah. It's not that easy. Yeah. It's not that easy. But the the sort of tracing that that this guy's talking about mm-hmm. is th- this guy ha- has edited these things into other images. He's altered the color of them. Mm-hmm. He's in in some cases like you've got a, an image here of a of a lad wielding a cavalry saber, whereas in the original one it looks like a a chef with a stick. <laughs> it it does. It does. It's a lot. It's a lot more basic. Uh-huh. Um, I don't know what the original image is from either. No, but that's so that that's maybe where I think that he could run into problems here is as if he's used something that's potentially copyrighted. Yeah, and and he's maybe not altered it enough. Mm-hmm. But like as as we said, at the same time, other games and artwork are full of homage. Oh yeah. Yeah. We t- we talked about Arkham Horror earlier. I, I yep. showed you the the Schizo Tool card, the, the young Harrison Ford card. Yeah, yep. and it's like, yeah, it's it's essentially it's a, uncanny. Any, anyone who's seen any promo work from Blade Runner, yeah, will look at it and go, "That's Harrison Ford." Yeah, um, you, I I showed Ben it, it again, the other way around. I showed Ben, uh, I believe it's Paul Kirby, um, who does a lot of uh, the the later. Artwork for the Dis- Discworld novels. Mm-hmm. He has uh, Samuel Vimes. He has he's openly stated that he sees Samuel Vimes as Clint Eastwood, and a lot of his artwork is very reflective of the kind of Dirty Harry yeah. era Clint Eastwood. And no one's ever gone. Well, he can't use Clint Eastwood's face because it's 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 an homage. He's he's yeah. quite openly said it. Um, I think the issue here is where um, Jacob, Jacob is isn't using he's maybe not necessarily openly admitting that he's he's putting these these images in as an homage um if if that's even what they are or if it is just a simple um he needs a, a framework to build up on his own artwork from yeah and and as you say if what when you're open about that mm-hmm. no one can really criticize you like you no. know we 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 spoke about um Harry Potter earlier when we were talking about homage, like J.K. We Rowling did, yep. has quite openly said that Dumbledore is based on Gandalf. Yep. So everyone's like, right, okay, fine. <laughs> it's not plagiarism. No. It's homage. Exactly. And if 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 anyone has ever used an orc anywhere in the the world, then you have Tolkien to thank for that because he was the one that yeah. came up with the original concept. So are the all orc. these people plagiarizing Tolkien? I don't think so. No. No, it's it's a concept he maybe started and ran with, and other people have gone. That's cool. I'm going to use that, or I really love Tolkien and in homage, I want to use yeah. orc. And then over time, it's evolved into this is an orc. It is distinct from a goblin now. Exactly. And the other thing about this as well, um, I think bringing this back to to the, this artist and his work, although it, it's being seen that he is using elements from other 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 pieces never is that just the only thing that's on the image they are all parts of a greater whole that he is he's put together mm-hmm. and put time and effort into amending adjusting and creating yeah. this um he is not from what i can see he is not copying directly anyone's work i don't think so i and i do think that um people are just trying to Create a bit of a scandal. It's, it's a news story. Um, I mean, for me as well. This this has come out. the the Reddit The Reddit post itself is a month old. If this had been any sort of big scandal, then you would expect, especially within the art community, who are very very protective of their work. Mm-hmm. This this would have been this would have been brought out ages yeah. ago. And I, th- would have... I think the reason that it's come up again is the there was a like a board game geek post about it or something like that. Yeah. And and that's brought it to that's everyone's attention, because Reddit is a little bit more niche, you know. Mm-hmm. So, it you know sometimes things do slip through the the cracks. They they do, but as as I say, for me, if this was a if, if this wasn't an actual issue, um, the art community themselves would be a lot more vocal, um, or you, you wouldn't have you wouldn't have been able to find work yeah. again. And if you, I mean, if you, we'll probably put the link to the the Reddit in the description. If you go and check the Reddit yourselves, you scroll down, you can see it's full of people saying that 
this happens all the time. Yeah. Artists borrow from each other. They mm-hmm. take inspiration from one another. And as as we were talking about just earlier, sometimes they pay homage exactly to people. So, uh, well, if, if you think of all those all those people out there doing fan art, <laughs> yeah. straight straight away, are you going to then say, well, no, you're totally stealing this this original yeah. concept, and you everyone should stop doing it? I wish some people wouldn't do fan art because oh, some of it is disturbing. Uh, the, 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 yeah, yeah. I'm not going to go into the deepest, darkest depths that yeah, of the internet I don't, that I don't we, want to. That people lurk in. Um, I think we've all happened upon something oh, yeah. that we wish that we hadn't. Oh, when you're just searching for for artwork for something, anyway, it, yeah. can, it can mistakenly pop up in a Google search. Yeah. Or a deviant art search. Yeah. Especially a Especially deviant art search. search. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. The 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 hint is in the name. <laughs> and <laughs> speaking of deviant art and the art community. And as yep. a whole, um, segues back into our, our final. Yep, topic. Our, f- our final little topic for this week. Um, we wanted to talk about online community mm-hmm. because it, it it seems a bit weird almost talking about tabletop gaming, and then talking about online community, because it's something that marries up quite well with video games. It it does. Um, I think I think the on online community um, for video games is is there because well it, it matters up because that's what it is. It's, yeah. it's, it's all online. It's anyway. all integrated. Um, but it has become a crucial part in in war gaming, um, or in in, in, in war gaming tabletop gaming, basically in any form of mm. of uh, of social communication yeah. nowadays. Um, I. I in as as one of my other hobbies, uh, I go swing dancing, and most of the way I find out about that is through the online community. So yeah. they are a, a a vital part of our society. Yeah. Nowadays, at, at a molecular level, I guess the online communities are the twenty first century equivalent of the court board. Yeah, yeah, they are. They are the they are the the global message board. Yeah. Where you can, you can from any location, look up and see what is going on, who is out there, and it happens almost instantaneously as well, which is a, a great boon to the. Oh, I'm going to stick a, a stick a, a pin up on this notice board in the middle of town, saying, "Does anyone want to approach me for a game?" and check back every day to see if anyone's posted yeah. a note below it. Yeah. Whereas, like you say, it, it is literally at the, the, the push of a button. It is. And it is. It, it's actually changed so quickly over the past few years because it, it used to be, for a lot of these things, you had to be on a forum. Oh, yes. Whereas, oh, whereas now those days. you've got all these Facebook groups. Well, yeah, it, it's like it comes down again to the sort of the, the domination of, of Facebook. Yeah. It becoming the be all and end all of everyone is on it, therefore. Everyone should have access to all the information yeah. at times, um, and we could go. We could go into a whole discussion about what Facebook shows and doesn't show, um, and, and what you check and you don't check. Um, but it is. It has evolved. You are right. I remember back in the days of of um, Warseer, um, and the the posting on there and the checking of threads and and uh, seeing who was who was online and who was not and. But again, you'd only have a, a proportion of the community on there, and then you'd be on the speak uh, just of Warhammer in general on the Bugman's forum, mm-hmm. and then I had the Empire forum as well, where you get a whole load of other people, um, and each of them posted different things and had different rule sets. And uh, although fa- although it's not changed so much in that respect, Facebook at least has put it all in in one easy to find place. Yeah. I mean, it's a shame in a way because it does mean that just with Facebook being as it is, that you lose some things. Whereas the nice thing about the forums <laughs> is, like, you you could have a section that was just all of your fan fiction or whatever. You, you could. You also could have those amazing signatures that took up half the page with all of the gifts and in in the the rural part of Scotland that I came the from. Page lo- um, took ten minutes. The page to took load. ten minutes to load because yeah. everyone's signatures were on there, yeah. and I couldn't even get one on mine because my computer and my internet was that slow. Uh-huh. Um, whereas with Facebook, you have you have your your profile on that. Yeah, it's just a bit more streamlined, yeah. and so 
by and large, I think it's safe to say our experience uh, experiences of using these things have been mostly positive. Well, I I am I am one of the beliefs who I am one of these people who does not feed trolls, not in the slightest. <laughs> um, I see quite a lot of there. There are most of the groups I am on tend to be very well moderated. Yeah. Um, and kudos to all those moder- moderators out there. It is a tough job. I do not envy you. And coming down with the ban hammer is entirely appropriate at times. Um, but there are still the occasional few who slip through who are out there just looking for an argument, who make statements that aren't need to be said. I think one of the most recent ones I saw was um, a, a chap on one of the painting forums that I'm on was moaning about the lack of diversity in ethereal armies where they were sprayed one colour, yeah. washed and dry brushed uh-huh. and I really wanted to step in and go well at least those armies were painted yeah. um, but I knew that oh, that was what he was looking for. He was voicing an opinion quite openly yeah. without any real criticism or yeah. or feedback required. Yeah, just stating, the, it, stating it. It's the unfortunate thing about a lot of the people that frequent these online communities is that they they don't go there to you know to be enlightened or to no. or to be told that they're wrong. A lot of people are on there just I think to stand in a soapbox. Yeah, that's it. and so what, one of the reasons I've been thinking a lot about online community, mm. um, uh, as I told you this evening, I I yep. had to ban someone, for, you know, for the first time, from a page, and. It's the first time ever mm-hmm. I've had to do that, and it was actually a lot more unpleasant. That I mean, I didn't think it was going to be pleasant. No, no, of course. But I didn't think that I would feel as bad about it as I did, because you you go through this thing of thinking like, well, people are on here to express themselves. Am, am I being yeah. a bit tyrannical here? But at the same time, like ha- having spoken to a lot of people that aren't as forward as myself and aren't as as vocal as myself when they see someone on a thread or a forum who's Mm -hmm. being derogatory towards pretty much everyone they speak to Mm -hmm. it actually puts them off of engaging oh absolutely absolutely so it it becomes one of these things and it it's the tricky balancing act of democracy at times it's like you know Sometimes we have to infringe upon the liberties of one person because he's infringing upon the liberties of about ten other people. Yeah, yeah it's it's worth it's worth saying that um, with freedom of speech comes responsibility. Yeah, I, I th- we we were discussing this and it, it came down to detact. Um, you can you can voice a negative opinion. As long as well, for me at least, it's it's either constructive. Or is also backed up by a positive opinion about the thing, mm-hmm. um, and it, it is worth saying that sometimes constructive things are difficult to hear. Oh, they are, they are. You know, like so, sometimes you do need to be told you're not you're not doing that properly in yep. order for you to be able to to That's move forward to change. Yeah, really. But there there's a way of saying these things. And I think one of the things that we mentioned earlier is I, I I think a lot of people don't understand the difference between being direct and being nasty. Yeah, it's it's that where do you draw where do you draw a line of being honest and being a a, a dick? Yeah, basically. Just because you can say it doesn't mean you should. No, no, exactly. And exactly. It's 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 like uh, it's it's telling a it's the difference between telling a a a. 12 year old kid who's painting their their first model um that it, it it's the difference between telling tell, yeah, telling the kid you know what this looks great you've got some amazing base colors down mm-hmm. there why don't you try adding this wash over the top of it and it'll just make it really stand out mm-hmm. then oh yeah you've just blobbed the paint on there that looks garbage yeah two very different ways of saying the same thing yeah um and hopefully people would understand that even if you're talking to an adult, you still have that responsibility to to mm-hmm. do the same thing. So I, I do I do think that online community for tabletop thing is predominantly positive. Oh, it is. Um, from the hobby perspective, where you're encouraging other people and you're motivating yourself by committing to like 
putting up pictures of things and then also from the perspective of being able to um, organise and meet with other people through oh, it. Absolutely, you, we we in, in the Glasgow area have just had, again going back to Shadespire, yeah. we've just had a couple of groups start up and they've been they've been great at helping um, arrange games, get people to meet up, to to take what was a non-existent entity in Glasgow that a few people played with each other to something that's now got folk meeting up on an almost daily basis yep. at times. Um, it's very, very helpful in in areas where there aren't a lot of people mm-hmm. that are together. I mean, I, I, where I came from, I didn't know anyone else that played unless I broached the subject. And back in those days, it wasn't polite to broach the fact that you were geeky. <laughs> um, but it, it, nowadays, it's out there. It's open. Those communities are, are safe and usually well maintained mm-hmm. um, and people do have that tact it is, you're right, it's it's a positive and productive atmosphere in most places and as you say there are a lot of individuals who are working very hard to ensure that it remains so absolutely so absolutely. For, for anyone that maybe feels a bit discouraged I would, I would maybe be mindful of the fact like that, that, that one troll or that one derogatory person that you've seen online how many other people were there that did not behave like that Exactly. Look, look at the numbers. If you see one one troll posting, how many how many people are in the group overall? Mm-hmm. Because they they will they will be the ones that are there to either join in on the games that you offer out, um, or be the ones that are are just sitting there watching and laughing at the carnage unfolding. The, the, from fa- this chap the fabled to, silent to majority. Exactly. Yes. Well, that's about all we've got time for this week. Mm-hmm. Scott, thank you very much for, for joining us. Again, thank you very much for yeah. having me and, and playing Shadespire with me and things yeah. as well tonight. Yeah, I dare say we'll have you back on the show soon. I'm looking forward to it. Yeah. But for all of our listeners, wherever you are, thank you for joining and we'll see you next time. Hi, everyone. It's Charlotte from the Unlucky Frog Gaming Podcast. Thank you so much for listening. Now be sure to follow us on Facebook and Twitter. All you need to do is search Unlucky Frog Gaming. You can also show your support for the Unlucky Frog through Patreon. To find out more information, check out our website, www.unluckyfrog.com. Thanks. Bye.